Hello and welcome to Science with Mr. Weber. Today we are going to be looking at ecosystems and in particular uh, impacts on ecosystems both abiotic and biotic. So ecosystems, these are biological communities of interacting organisms. It also includes their physical environment, so those biotic and abiotic factors. Sustainable ecosystems. These are diverse ecosystems that can provide for the, all the needs of organisms over a long period of time. So the, the key thing there is uh, the, the long period of time. Uh, it means that all organisms are, are well taken care of by the system that's already at balance. Impacts on ecosystems. So uh, these are things that can cause a change in an ecosystem. Okay, they can be biotic or abiotic. Abiotic impacts, these include things like drought, flood, fire, tsunami, and cyclones. Causes of floods. So, floods are usually caused by heavy rainfall, cyclones, very high tides, and tsunamis. Flood management. So, uh, I guess in terms of ecosystems, there's not a lot that can be done. In fact, sometimes uh, different ecosystems require flooding uh, periodically. But for humans, okay, uh, the ways that we are able to deal with flooding is through the use of levees, so raised banks, and channels to improve drainage of those rising water levels. Okay, so fires. So the causes of fire. So usually it's going to be lightning. Uh, the result, and uh, I suppose what can really add to the fire, is the large amounts of dry fuel, so fallen branches, bark, leaf litter, uh, wind speed, and another source of ignition is human activity, uh, unfortunately deliberate uh, as well as accidental. So preventing fire, so again, uh, ecosystems don't really have a way of preventing fires, but some actually require fire in order for uh, different seeds to to be able to germinate properly. So, we don't need fires, so our methods of preventing them include uh, fuel reduction burning, or back burning, uh, monitoring of fires to see where they are, and providing firefighters with easy access to, to routes uh, through bushland. Okay, so we'll move on to biotic impacts now. So, these are usually introduced species, so things that weren't already within the ecosystem. And humans have introduced species as food, pets, and transport. And we're going to focus on one now. So, the grey-backed cane beetle, this is actually a native beetle to Australia. So, it eats sugar cane leaves, and its larvae eat the roots. Uh, pesticides kill harmless insects as well as the grey-backed cane beetle. So, the idea was not to use uh, pesticides. So, sugar cane, we use that to produce sugar. Alright, so the idea was then to introduce cane toads. Okay, so these were toads native to South America. Uh, 102 of them were introduced in 1935 to control uh, native grey-backed cane beetle populations. Uh, but since being released, they actually multiplied really rapidly and now we have over 200 million in Australia. And unfortunately, they are very toxic, which means that when native species eat the toads, they actually end up dying. And I think probably the worst part about it is they actually never ended up eating the grey-backed cane beetles, so uh, it ended up being a complete waste of time that's resulted in uh, a severe impact to many ecosystems. Okay, uh, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. 